We're going to show you how to grab some 10 by 32 binoculars or any size astronomical binoculars and turn them into focal reducer. These ones are had it. You can see that it's got a really foggy lens there and there's also bits of rust in it on some of the, the metal parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the primary lens, this one here, and uh, turn it into a focal reducer. And that's done by using an inch and a quarter to two inch white piece adapter like this and on the flat surface and we'll turn it over on this flat surface here that's where you glue the the lens now the things you'll need toothpicks some super glue be careful of that it's dangerous and some cleaning implements like cotton buds and I use isopropyl alcohol I find it cleans really well doesn't leave any streaks and some uh, two-part epoxy glue that'll come in really handy you don't have to use it but I do now to start with get a really small screwdriver and if you look on the front of the binoculars there's a ring holding the lens in and it has a small slot in it now if you put the screwdriver in that slot you can turn that ring round and round and that'll undo so you can get the lens out now they have rubber cups over some of them like these ones these are water protected the rubber just pull, peels back see I've already peeled this one back so you can undo that ring carefully lift it out without scratching the lens and once you've done that tip it over and just pop the lens out once you've got it out you can give it a, a good clean and then you'll find that uh, that lens will sit nicely on top of the flat side of the adapter this one is a really tight fit it's only just going to fit inside uh, outside the hole so what I'm going to do I'm going to get an eyepiece and take off the steel barrel just unscrew it and that I can put inside the adapter to give the, the lens some support by lifting it up like that's getting it level actually the best way to get it level would be to turn it over and we'll turn it over and put it flat on the table then do up the screw the holding screw and that should make the uh, steel barrel level with the, the eyepiece adapter so now when I put the uh, lens on it sits flat and what I do now is get a bit of glue, the super glue. Yeah, we only need about one drop. Super glue is very sticky. And get it on your fingers. So about one drop. And get one of your toothpicks. And just dab it around the edges very carefully. Don't put it on the steel ring if you can help it, just on the black surface you don't need very much at all just small bits around the edge there and work your way all the way around it won't dry out on you super glue dries on contact so once you put the lens on that's when it dries so just go all the way around it and once you've got it done it looks like that doesn't worry about it being a bit messy no one's going to see it you just don't want big blobs that will run into the lens and spoil it now the tricky bit is to center it if you look down from above the steel ring will help in this case you should be able to find center give the lens a really good clean and drop it on the center like that and there it is centered now that'll be glued already but because this one is such a small lens and it doesn't have a, a large area for the super glue to hold on I'm also going to use the two-part epoxy resin to make sure it does stay there normally I wouldn't when I use a larger lens so with the, uh, the two-part epoxy just uh, only need a small amount again we're not going to build a house with it and I'll open it up 
and I'll put it just around the edge here. Doesn't matter if you, you know, smear it everywhere, no one's going to see it. Just screw it out both parts A and B, they come out together. And mix them good, or the glue won't harden. Because one's the glue, one's a hardener. Mix them together really, really well. It's a bit hard holding this phone with one hand and doing everything else with one hand. Now, once you've got it mixed, spread it right around the edge. Don't get it on the top of the lens. <laughs> You'll ruin it. Doesn't matter how much you put on. Doesn't matter how messy it is on the on the outside. And when it's finished, that's how it looks. Just like that. Glue it all the way around. Now leave that sit for about 10-15 minutes and it should go hard. And it's ready to use. So let's pop it onto the camera, onto the melon cam video camera and see how it looks. There's the Melon Cam Extreme and the focal reducer we've just made. Just slide straight on top. Do up the lock screw and that's it. It's all ready to go. Now you can pop it into the telescope. In this case it's my ED80. Now while we're at this point, just another little trick I like to teach people. Cameras have a tendency to slide out, so do white pieces. All I grab is a, a hair tie, one of those elastic hair bands, and I hook it around. And that will stop the camera from falling out if it ever comes loose. And there you go, it's held on by a hair tie. Very simple. And now an important piece of information, you'll want to know the amount of focal reduction. In this case I've used a tree about 5 kilometers away. You can use stars, stars are easier to measure. But I was doing this in the daytime. Now, what you want to do first is have no focal reducer in the telescope. Set up your camera and take a photo of the object, or it's still, and measure the width of the object or the two stars. I measured it on the screen with a tape measure. Now pop in the focal reducer, do exactly the same thing on the same object, be careful to get the edges precise or use the same two stars and you'll find they'll be closer together and measure that distance in this case 180 millimeters and using those two figures we can go to a percentage calculator and work out the focal reduction. I used a, a simple website, here's the address, and all you have to do is put in the two figures with the focal reducer, without the focal reducer, and it will calculate your focal reduction. In this case, my focal reduction is 0.58 times. But now we want to see how well it works on the sky. Let's go and have a look. Okay, it's now night time and I'm broadcasting on the Night Skies Network and you can see the uh, image up there on Night Skies Network. Our first target is the Moon. Now the Moon is half a degree wide and what I did, even though I didn't show it here, is I moved the Moon right onto the edge of the frame of the field of view and it took up exactly half the frame which tells me that the field of view with this focal reducer set where it is, is one degree. That's a nice wide field of view. So let's go and have a look at the next object, which will be M42. And you can see it easily fits into the field of view, the whole lot of M42, because it is actually one degree wide. So let's move M42 just to the left, and you'll find out that we can also fit in the running man. Yes, there's the running man on the right hand side. 
So this focal reducer has given us a really nice field of view with M42 taking up most of the left hand side and running man sneaking in on the right there. That's good. Okay, now we'll go to a southern object and we'll see how much of the Carina Nebula we can fit in. And there it is. It's a very, very large nebula and I'm actually getting quite a lot of it. And you can even see the keyhole near the bottom left corner, the keyhole nebula, and the bright star Eta Carina, and a large expanse of Carina Nebula. Well, I'm really happy with the results and I noticed by zooming in, you can do it by enlarging the screen, that there's no coma in any of the stars. Right to the corners, the stars are nice and round and sharp. And there's no uh, vignetting, which is darkening around the edges. So I'm really, really happy with the results. And I hope it's helped you, and you can make a focal reducer for yourself, and enjoy your video astronomy. And I'll just close this video off by giving you a view of the Tarantula Nebula and some other clusters of nebulas in the Large Magellanic Cloud. Bye.